We're here at Dr. Frank's Historic Vineyards in Hammondsport, New York. I'm Fred Frank, third generation of the family managing the winery. And this is my daughter, Megan Frank, fourth generation uh, managing the winery. And so we're really excited to be with you all, American Wine Society members. As you know, Dr. Constantine Frank was one of the initial founders of this wonderful organization way back in 1967. And he felt it was very important to have a wine consumer organization that was national, that would educate more Americans about the joys and wonders of appreciating fine wines. And so Dr. Constantine Frank founded our winery back in 1962. He was a PhD in viticulture. That's the science of growing grapes. And his thesis was techniques for growing the vitis vinifera in a cold climate. So when he came to New York as an immigrant in 1951 and was told that you couldn't grow vinifera in the Eastern United States, he took that as a challenge and set out to prove the experts wrong. And so one of the reasons for uh, many years of failure with vinifera in the East is that we have a pest that's native to the soils here throughout the eastern United States called phylloxera. This is a root louse. And earlier attempts to grow the vinifera were unsuccessful because growers would take a cutting of the vinifera vine, put it in the soil, within a few years the roots were eaten off. So what Constantine did was take cuttings from the wild grape varieties that he knew evolved to be resistant to this wild pest grafted them onto the European cuttings and thus was able to grow the fabulous Vetus vinifera varieties here in the eastern United States. So it started here in Hammondsport at our vineyards, first planted in 1958. But Dr. Frank was very giving with his knowledge. He wanted the eastern wine industry to prosper. He felt Americans only deserve the best wines. And so he established a group of what he called his cooperators. And these were early believers in the quality wine movement in the East Coast. And they were in Eastern states around New York. Many of them came to work a vintage or crush at Dr. Frank's winery. Many also bought the grafted vines from his nursery with the resistant rootstock. And then they spread the word in surrounding states around New York. And thus, this created the wonderful vinifera movement and elevated the quality of wines throughout the United States. And today, all 50 states have wineries. So it's really been exciting. It's given Americans more opportunities to visit wineries, learn about wine, and has led to the U.S. becoming the largest wine market in the world just this past year. So we're really excited to now be in our fourth generation here at Dr. Frank's continuing Constantine's legacy. So I wanted to give you a little background about Megan. Uh, some of you may not have met her yet. She has a master's degree in wine business from the University of Adelaide, has worked for some Australian wineries, and also has a master's in winemaking from Cornell. So I think Constantine would be very proud uh, that his great-granddaughter is continuing his legacy here at Dr. Frank's Winery. So many of you are joining us from across the country, and we hope that you visit us here at Dr. Frank's Winery, but in the case that you haven't, we wanted to share with you a little bit of background about our region. So we're located in western New York, northwestern New York. So we are about four and a half hours from New York City, so northwest, and our region, our American viticulture area, is called the Finger Lakes. And it's a collection of 11 lakes, and it looks like if somebody was driving a plane over the area, it looks like they carved fingers out from the lake. So that's where they got their names. And there are three major lakes in terms of the wine production today. And that's Cuca Lake, the lake that we're on currently. It's a fork-shaped lake. It almost looks like a Y. Uh, next to us is the middle lake called Seneca Lake and then further over east on the eastern side it's Cayuga Lake. And all three of these lakes are where the majority of the wine production and grape growing is occurring uh, to this day. And the reason why the Finger Lakes is so special 
it's naturally very beautiful because you have these deep glacial lakes um, that are really gorgeous and you have these really steep slopes that uh, show a lot of severe topography in our region. Um, but it's also very special because we have a myriad of soil types to work with and that's due to the way the Finger Lakes were formed. During the last ice age, glaciers receded and left behind uh, many different soil types. So in our plot alone, we have uh, spots of clay and shale, we have very heavy um, portions of shale, we have loamy soils, there are some areas in the Finger Lakes that have limestone, sandy soils, so there's really a lot to work with and that gives us a lot of options of the styles of wine that we're producing and also the grape varieties that are grown on those sites. So a big movement here is the single vineyard movement and that showcases specifically Riesling has been very popular with this. Showcases Riesling grown on many different soil types and they may be very close in proximity to each other but they really show the distinctness of the soil type and of the area that it's grown. And, and also grow. Seneca Lake, uh, you know, in 2006, uh, we expanded our operations beyond Cuca Lake and purchased a large uh, a vineyard plot uh, that we planted from scratch uh, with the top clones of the vinifera wine grapes. And that has allowed us to grow some more tender wine grapes. Uh, Seneca Lake being a deeper, wider lake uh, affords us uh, more moderate winter temperatures. It's known the area we're in is Hector, New York. It's on the eastern shore of Seneca. It's known affectionately as the Banana Belt. And the reason is the, the lake right off our shoreline is about 600 feet deep. So it allows us to grow some more tender wine grapes that would struggle a bit here in our Cuca vineyard, which has a shallower lake only 200 feet deep. Uh, so, for example, we've expanded Gruner Veltliner, which is the number one white of Austria. Uh, does really well in, in our uh, Seneca Lake soils and, and climate there. Uh, we've also expanded a Georgian red, originally from Republic of Georgia, called Saparavi. We've expanded it there and uh, also growing Gewurztraminer, Pinot Gris, and uh, Riesling. Riesling does well there specifically our fruitier style of Riesling, which uh, we call our semi-dry. And that's actually our most popular wine. So the deeper loamy soils in Seneca Lake tend to produce a more fruit forward style of Riesling. And here the rockier soils on Cuca Lake, where we have lots of shale uh, in the soils, they produce more of a mineral driven style, which works very well in our dry style. So you can see how we've evolved over the last 50 years, not only are we sourcing different wine grape varieties from different vineyard sites, we're actually sourcing different wine styles within the same wine grape variety, like Riesling, for example. So having this additional vineyard site on Seneca Lake really, I think, has helped us move forward and to continue to push the quality of Dr. Frank wine. And so we're here to sort of have a tasting with you and share with you these many award-winning wines. For those of you that remember Dr. Constantine Frank, we have some great uh, mementos. This is a, a historic documentary DVD that's available in our tasting room, An American and His Wine. And as a special gift to AWS members, uh, if you order a case of award-winning Dr. Frank wines, either having it chipped or in person, uh, this will be a gift for you uh, so that you can remember those fond memories of Dr. Constantine Frank. So there's great footage of him uh, in, in this DVD. We also have available this uh, best-selling book by Tom Russ uh, called Finger Lakes Wine and the Legacy of Dr. Constantine Frank. So this is available both through American Wine Society Direct and also uh, through our, our winery uh, retail shop. Can it either be ordered online or uh, in person with a visit to the winery. And this is now in its third printing and is sold out each time. It's also available in Barnes and Noble uh, and Amazon. So these are great ways to remember Dr. Frank and for those of you new to AWS to learn about Dr. Frank and his wonderful achievements and great legacy that he's left us. 
So we're here in 2016, it's harvest time. You can see it's a beautiful day. We're standing in front of the historic Arcazzatelli Vineyard. Uh, this was one of the original uh, vines planted uh, way back in the late 50s. This made Dr. Frank's world list of great wine grapes. It is a very historic wine grape going back, uh, archeologists believe 4,000 years and they think it was the first wine grape used for winemaking. And uh, the reason that they're um, convinced of that is they've done archeology span digs in the Republic of Georgia, and they've unearthed early clay pottery, and there were grape seeds in this pottery that was used for fermentations. And through DNA analysis, they determined that it was Arcatzatelli and through carbon dating, they determined it was 4,000 years old. So um, it's also the most popular wine grape in Eastern Europe uh, with Republic of Georgia and then surrounding Eastern European nations. So this is a, a wine grape that we first started in the late 50s and we've gradually expanded our acreage over the years. Uh, what would happen is we've had fans of the winery coming in the summer and we'd be sold out. So. We've expanded our acreage. We have about seven acres now, and that has allowed us to offer it to our wholesalers. So it's available both when direct sales to consumers and through wholesalers in uh, many Eastern states. It has a great history. It's one of my favorite wines. And Megan is gonna open this wine, and we're gonna share some with you. I hope you, you're able to taste this wine with us in your local AWS chapters. So it's one of my favorites with fish and seafood. Uh, has a nice crisp acidity. We'll do a little toast here <laughs> with Megan. And um, it really has a unique flavor profile. Some people will try to compare it to a French Muscadet or a little bit like a Sauvignon Blanc or maybe some Gewurz flavors. But remember, this is its own unique grape, so it has its own flavor pro profile. And to me, this is the perfect wine if you have friends and you're bringing them, uh, you're inviting them over for dinner and they're really wine knowledge, well, they think they know there's everything there is about wine. Uh, this is the perfect wine to serve in a brown paper bag and just ask your guests to guess what it is. And uh, it's a pretty humbling experience. There's only a handful of vintners across the whole United States that grow this grape, but we believe it's a very historic wine grape, obviously, and uh, is, is a wonderful uh, wine. It's the, the number one white in Eastern Europe and thought to be the oldest known wine grape. So let's uh, give it a shot. Mm. I hope you're enjoying this with us. It's a fabulous wine. It's even being poured at some of the top restaurants in New York City, for example, the Gramercy Tavern pours this wine by the glass, and the sommelier there loves to tell a story of how it's thought to be the oldest known wine grape and the most popular grape in Eastern Europe. So that is the Arcazzatelli. So on the nose with Arcazzatelli, we get a nice citric character, almost like a lime zest. Very fresh. The wine is uh, fermented and matured in stainless steel, so there's no oak maturation or fermentation on this one, so it's a very fresh expression of Arcazzatelli. So very citric and it has some sort of like an herbaceous character, which we see every year with this grape variety. It's very, very interesting and it leads it to be perfect with pairing with ethnic spicy food. So Thai and Indian and Cajun, Mexican, anything with a little bit of exotic spice is really a perfect pairing with Arcazzatelli. Well, this wine here is a sparkling wine from our sister winery called Chateau Franc. And uh, we produce all Meteau Champenois sparkling wines at this beautiful historic wine cellar. It was built in 1886, one of the first wineries in New York. Back then it was called the Western New York Wine Company. It went out of business during Prohibition. And then my dad, Willie Frank, uh, purchased the property, continued its restoration, and uh, it was just named last year to the National Registry of Historic Places. So it's wonderful to continue 
this historic wine cellar. But what attracted Willie to this property was it had very deep cellars. So it's really ideal for the long-term aging of these sparkling wines, which sometimes can age four or five years on the yeast in the bottle. So the wine that we're gonna taste today is our most popular sparkling wine. It's called our Celebra. We call it a Cremon, and it's 100% Riesling. So I'm gonna pour some for Megan. So this wine, being that it's Meta Champenois, has actually gone through two fermentations. And the second fermentation actually occurred in this same bottle, which is really what makes this production technique very special. It's the most expensive, most labor-intensive method to produce sparkling wine, and it's the same exact process as in Champagne. So we remember, I remember when, we were, when I was young, uh, my grandfather he would put Finger Lakes Champagne on the label because it was the same exact production method. And he would say, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> so when he passed away in 2006, we changed the name to Metro Champenois to be a little bit more politically correct, Finger Lakes Sparkling Wine, but it is that same exact production method. The secondary fermentation, long, slow, cool fermentation occurs in the bottle and then it's aged on the leaves or the dead yeast cells for this one for two years. But we have some sparkling wines that age on the leaves for four to five years and occasionally we'll do a prestige cuvee that's aged on the leaves for 10 years. So it's an enormous amount of labor and uh, definitely a labor of love. I would well, say. let's cheers to Willie who founded Chateau Frank. Cheers. cheers. So this wine on the nose it's still very fresh. It's been on the lease for two years, remember. So what we're trying to, what our real goal is for the, these sparkling wines is to have a really nice high acidity, still be very fresh, but to have an autolytic character, um, some complexity there, like almost like a toasted almond, kind of that toasty, nutty aroma, which this wine has a bit of, but not too overwhelming. It just adds a little bit of complexity. So I get a lot of green apple, a lot of pear, a lot of lemon, fresh lemon, and then on the on the palate, really nice high acidity. Um, it does have a touch of sweetness, but it's balanced with the acidity. But our most popular sparkling wine, and I can definitely see why. So the next wine we're going to taste is the dry Riesling. This is probably the wine that is our benchmark wine we're most famous for. Uh, it's from the vineyards right here on Cuca Lake. Very rocky soils, a lot of shale. We think that contributes nicely to the mineral character of this wine. And uh, it's really a great food wine. Uh, so the idea of dry Riesling, um, really I think Dr. Frank was one of the first to produce this style of wine uh, in the United States. Um, most Americans, when you think of Riesling, think of a sweeter wine, but uh, it really works well in a drier style, that nice crisp acidity, moderate alcohol around 12, 12 and a half percent, really works very nicely with lighter dishes. So um, we're going to taste this wine together, the dry Riesling, and it was just added uh, this, this year, 2016, by the Wine Enthusiast magazine as one of their top 100 best value wines of the year. So it sells for under $15 and is recognized as one of the, the top wines. So Megan is gonna taste us through this wine, the dry Riesling. So on the nose, we traditionally get almost like a, a flintiness to this wine. It's grown on the shale, uh, very rocky acidic soils. So nice green apple, stone fruits, apricot, pear. Um, it's very fruit forward, very aromatic. And on the palate, very fresh, very high acidity. That's what this style is really very well known for. And that's what makes it so food friendly is that acidity will cut through any cream sauces, 
um, or any uh, protein in your meal. It'll really cut through there and, and cleanse your mouth for the next bite. But again, a really high acidity and this minerality coming through, which is very, very trademark to our style. And it's, we believe, due to the high content of shale in our vineyards where we plant this one. So really, really nice style of dry Riesling. The next wine that we're going to taste is the Dr. Frank Gewürztraminer. Uh, a number of writers, when asked the question, OK, we all agree that the Finger Lakes make some of the best Riesling in America, what other varieties do well here? Many have said Gewürztraminer. In fact, a famous wine writer, Lady Teague, writes for the Wall Street Journal, proclaimed the Dr. Frank Gewürz as her top choice among domestic producers. Gewürztraminer, what we have here, is actually my personal favorite. Is it your favorite, Dad? One of my favorites. Of also favorites. the favorites of our wild turkeys, believe it or not. We have a flock of about 30 and we grow over 30 wine grapes and we'll see the flock walking through the Riesling, making a left at the Chardonnay, still till they come to the Gewürztraminer, their favorite. So we make it a point we, uh, of our visitors that come to the winery, you know, we try to come up with food pairings for each wine. And one of our favorite choices with the Gewürztraminer is wild turkey, perfect uh, food pairing. So that's our way of getting back at these wild turkeys. <laughs> that's true, the turkeys do love the grapes. And they're the, a beautiful light pink color and the grape actually tastes like rose petal and lychee, the same exact flavors that you're getting in the wine. So with most wines in general, most um, vinifera varieties, a lot of the flavors and the aromatics are coming through because of fermentation. Whereas Gewürztraminer, these flavors are inherent to the actual grape and you can taste them and really get um, an insight to what the vintage is going to lead to. And of course they're heightened by fermentation, but it's very, very unique in that way. Mm. So very aromatic. The, the nose really jumps out. When I was in Australia, they have this candy that they produce in Turkey. And it's very, very common to have it in Australia at these specialty markets. And it's called Turkish Delight. Mm. And every time I would go to a tasting in mm. Adelaide, the first person mm. to raise their hand talking about Gewürztraminer would say a tasting note of Turkish Delight because it has, it's almost like a rose water candy mm. uh, and it's it's very, very interesting, very similar to the Gewürztraminer. But you have a lot of exotic spices and Gewürz in German means spice. So it's inherently spicy and floral and fruit forward. Mm. This is a drier style of Gewürztraminer. So it's got about 0.9% residual sweetness. Mm -hmm. quite dry, excellent with food, um, and the more exotic the better. Mm -hmm. You know, really, really does well with really unique dishes as well. Mm -hmm. On the palate, it's nice and dry. Again, you have that nice high acidity, which Gewürztraminer naturally has a lower acidity when compared to Riesling, just naturally, but it, this one is very balanced. And it has some palate weight, so it's still, it's a bit more medium bodied, I would say. Can really stand up to richer dishes. Next wine we're going to taste is a red. Uh, this red is called Lemberger. It's also known as Blau Frankisch in Austria. So in Germany, it's called Lemberger. And this is the predominant name used in the Finger Lakes, but the same grape in Austria is called Blau Frankisch. So it's a great, cool climate red. Uh, we're really excited about it. We grow it at our vineyards in Hector, and it's really done well for us. And we're expanding our vineyards because we believe this variety uh, is a nice, cool climate red for the Finger Lakes. So this grape variety, Lemberger, is known as the Pinot Noir of the East because of its heavy plantings in Eastern Europe. So it's very, very well suited to our climate here. Wonderful nose. Yeah, produces more of a medium bodied, similar mm -hmm. to a Pinot Noir, but very spicy, a lot of clove and cinnamon on the nose. Mm. Um, some black pepper there. Mm -hmm. Very balanced. 
some nice mm -hmm. velvety tannins kind of coming through. Mm -hmm. And this wine is aged for 10 months in French and also Hungarian oak to give it a nice spicy kind of character and to really mellow out the tannins and the astringency. So it's a very smooth, mm -hmm. um, yeah, nice long finish there. Mm. Very good. Excellent food wine as well. Great with heartier dishes, um, any barbecue or any um, pot roast, mm -hmm. even eggplant parmesan. It's a very nice pairing. Mm. Well, that concludes our tasting for today. Thank you all so much for joining us. And we welcome all of you to come visit. It's the 50th anniversary of the American Wine Society. And we would love to welcome you here to our winery in Hammondsport, New York for a tasting and a tour and show you around what is a very historic place for the American Wine Society. So thank you all so much for joining us and hope to see you soon. Cheers.